Last year, Danielle McEwen capped off the tour season with a win at the PWBA Tour Championship in Arlington, Texas. Tonight, she's back. And she's joined by four top international players who are just as hungry to take home this major title. The USBC Queens is next on CBS Sports Network. One of the entertainment capitals of the world is also one of the best bowling cities, Las Vegas. And it's the scene for the first major of the 2016 PWBA season. USBC Queens, five of the world's best bowlers compete for history, the tiara, and big prize money. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. It's great to have you with us. This is Dave Ryan. I'll be joined by six-time major champion Kelly Kulik in a moment and USBC Hall of Famer Carolyn Doran Ballard. This is the first of four major championships we'll have for you at CBS Sports Network. Let's check the step ladder finals. We'll start with Sandra Anderson from Sweden, averaging a 241.6, the last three matches to earn the top seed. Bernice Lim, the number two seed, one of eight players from Team Singapore. Then Danielle McEwen, the lone American from the field. First under the scene as we saw last year, winning the PWBA Tour Championship. Also, Birgit Poplar of Germany, Lee Jane of Malaysia, will start play fourth and fifth seed. So Kelly, why have so many international players done so well at this event? You know, a lot of the American young ladies have gone overseas to compete in their events. They're seeing how strong the Professional Women's Bowling Association is. They're coming over, they want to compete, they want to get better, and they want to bowl against the best. Well, one of those international stars is our top seed, Sandra Anderson from Sweden. She's joined now by Carolyn Dorn Ballard. Sandra, in only your third Queen's appearance, you find yourself at the top of the leaderboard, but you have three matches to wait until you get to bowl. What are you going to do during that time frame? I'm just going to relax, listen to some music, and throw a few practice shots. Then I'll be ready. Okay, tell us, what's your favorite music? Uh, I love Sia, so that's probably what I'm going to be listening to. <laughs> okay, best of luck to you. Back to you, Dave. Carolyn, Sandra, thanks. When we come back to Vegas, it is time to bowl. The first event of the 2016 PWBA season is also the first major. It's on the way. The tiara, the check, and a place in history are all on the line. USBC Queens on CBS Sports Network is brought to you by Smithfield. Flavor hails from Smithfield. Get inspired at smithfield.com today. By Nationwide. Nationwide is on your side. And by a future for the sport. The USBC and BPAA are working together to build a future for the sport of bowling. We are ready to bowl. Orleans Casino Resort in fabulous Las Vegas. A major championship at stake, our first match. Here get Pupla against Lee Jane. Europe against Asia. 21 different countries represented in this tournament. 256 oh bowlers. We're down to five from five I feel different a countries. Shaky, uh, like physically. Yeah. Oh, I think it's really well. oh, nice nudge. And a good start for the four seed. And a little smile from, from Lee Jane there, getting the nerves out of herself out of the gate early. Look at this ball. A little high. Ten pins going backwards. Something comes forward to trip three. Amazing pin action here at the Orleans right now. Birgit Puppler, five seed from Germany. Late nudge on number seven, down it goes. And two trip pins. Strikes the the match. Two taps on that seven pin to knock it over. Ball is great into the pocket, rolls into the eight and nine. The five just trips over enough to hit the seven pin, not once, but twice to knock it down. From Klein Königsjordler, Germany. Small town, 300 people in the northern part of the country, not far from the beach for her in the summertime. So good on your German pronunciation, too. Dankeschön. More help, this time on the nine pin. 
and a really good start for Birgit Pupla. Wow, that was so good. I think I need to see that again. Again, the ball is flush in the pocket. Notice the ball is going left off the pin deck. It bounces off the side action to kick out the nine. Love to watch the balls that goes off the pin deck. When it's going towards the A pin or nine pin, you know you have great shape down the lane, and the ball is giving you great motion. Back to Lee Jane. High flush. Oh, 10 down. And Lee Jane is locked in. Let's take a look at Lee Jane's form here. Now, she starts the ball on that first half step, gets the ball into the swing very, very quick. It gets past that right knee, has a great power step, long continuous slide, and the leverage she creates at the foul line with her shoulder is truly amazing. She has a lot of power, a lot of strength behind her, and she uses her legs very, very well. Member of the Malaysian national team, keeps everybody perfect. Let's break down the oil pattern here. Kelly, future for the sport lane pattern. Well, the ladies bowled on a 40-foot pattern this week. It was 40 feet in length, a medium to high volume oil. If you look at the shape of it, there was a lot of shape to the pattern, multiple angles to play. The caliber of athletes this week made it look great from any part of the lane, and we're bowling on fire conditioner. So it's good to use for a very slick lane service, which the girls are bowling on right now. What a start for each. Six straight strikes. Three frames each and three perfect shots. Brigitte here is more powerful. She gets the ball in the swing much later on that third step. But look how long her four step is. She holds the ball in the air. Her foot comes to a complete stop. And again, she creates a lot of leverage at the foul line. She's able to go left to right, a strength that she really likes to do. And she sees the lane very well. A lot of international experience. Lee Jane for Team Malaysia. Birgit for Team Deutschland. That's high, and our first non-strike. Yeah, Bridget looked like she just got that one inside of her target just a little bit compared to previous shots. A little inside, 3 6 10 spare. So here she's sliding around 21, about 12 at the arrow zone. She gets the ball right down here around 7, 8 at the break point area, right around 34 feet. And as it changes direction, it's a little too sharp, which leaves that 3, 6 tenths conversion. Three six ten covers nicely. Any player who converts a 7-10 split on a CBS Sports Network Finals will receive a $100,000 bonus, courtesy of Ultimate Bowling Products. No bowler wants the 7-10, but <laughs> I know, Kelly, you'd want that 100000 if you could make it. I know. It's a catch-22, right? That's you don't right. want to leave it, but if you make it, wow. That would uh, pay off the house and a few other things. <laughs> Lee Jane, perfect through four. What a start, and on the bench. Gets the three-pin lead, now 13 with another strike. What do you think of her road to the finals? Well, Dina Buxton from Australia, she defeated 707 to 571. Clara Guerrero, another international player. Amanda Green, first time titleist last year. Robin Renslaw, which had a great performance here at the Queens, but she lost to Bernice Lim, who's seated in this finals now. Her scores were tremendous. She averaged probably 220 plus throughout the entire week. Do credit to the Malaysian team and their practice regiment overseas. And again, the caliber of athletes this week was the greatest I've ever seen in any competition. That's a lot coming from you. <laughs> what a start. She's dialed in. Totally on each lane, which is not easy to do on a TV pair. They play differently. She so wanted just to focus on her own game. Didn't want to worry about anything else, the lighting, who she's competing against, but really just to zero in on herself and make her the primary reason of why she's here. Focus on herself. She's got the front five. Back to Birgit, the five seed. Works on a spare. Suddenly down by 23 pins. Good shot, 10-pin stands. Great shot, so aggressive. 
I love her physical technique and how aggressive she is in releasing the bowling ball itself. Right here, a great pocket shot, a little amped up on the speed. Six pin just goes horizontal enough to wrap itself around the 10 pin. Usually that's a speed indication. Again, being aggressive, a little entry angle into the pocket, which creates that six pin to just wrap right around it. Takes care of the 10 pin for the mark. We saw Lee Jane got this far. How about Piergan? Well, Josie Ernest, another Team USA player, Missy Parkin, Katie Sutphin, she's having a great success on tour this year. And Wei New Fen, New Wei Fen, lost Sandra Anderson 7 to 4 to 546. She said that was her worst match out of all of them. She bowled so poorly against Sandra to give up her number one seed, but she's still seated here in the in the first opening match of the 2016 Queens. She was top 25 a year ago at this event. Seven down on a high shot. So she told us pre-match, pretty excited to make the show for the first time in her career at the Queens. Yeah, very, very excited. Here again on this left lane, she's right around the same area. Break point looks very close, but notice how violently the ball changes direction in the back portion of the lane. There must be a hook spot back there, which is creating so much hook in the back end of the lane. There's going to be an adjustment to be made, either a move with the feet and the eyes, or possibly a ball change later on down the road. Picks up a spare. Started playing when she was five years old. Works at the bowling center with her parents, family owned in Germany. Her uncle's covering for her this week to allow her to come over here and bowl. That's nice of him. Very true. Seven ten opportunity and a chance for the one hundred thousand dollar bonus. Have you ever made the seven ten? I have. I have made the seven ten split three times, three twice times. in practice, once in competition. The ball here just loses energy a little late. Notice how it deflects to the right side of the pin deck, leaving the seven ten. Got to throw it hard. Try to bounce off the ten or the seven. Off the back. $100,000 on the line. She cannot convert. Takes care of the 10. Leaves the 7. It's an open frame midway through. Let's go back to Carolyn. When uh, Birgit started the match, she had the left lane, lane 5, just a little bit tighter. So she was using a ball that rolls in the middle part of the lane. A little smoother off the spot so she can keep it in front of her. Obviously, the left lane has... We will be making a move on that left lane. light on that shot. I think she might have overcompensated for the last one. Great delivery with that 7-10, the bad break. This one on this delivery, let's take a look at it. Again, high backswing, pushes through. She's definitely right of target on that left lane. If you look down here, it's way, way right at the break point area, somewhere around 6-7. Gets too far right, doesn't have enough track area, comes up light, leaves the bucket. 2-4-5-8. So the bucket off the 7-10 split and the open frame. Yeah, I mean, she needed those first five to get a good start out of the gate. He's convert the spare to keep up. Well, got some help. You know, the way some of these pins are moving, I'm not sure that 710 can be made today. I'd love to see it. Covers the bucket after the six pin count to keep things very interesting. USBC Queens from Vegas is underway. Are you looking for some great PWBA gear? Then visit the official online store of the PWBA at shoppwba.com. Great to see Chad Murphy here, executive director of the USPC. First event of the season is also the first major. A year ago, Liz Johnson won the championship. Birgit leaves the 10 pin here. Second half of match number one, step ladder finals. Only one American though this year, it's not Liz. Danielle McEwen from Stony Point, New York. 
with yeah. a three seed. Team USA player, you know, what a resume she's developed in the last two years as an individual bowler right now. She's been going overseas competing against these girls right here, Brigitte, Lee Jane, Bernice, all of these ladies, highly competitive. Gantren Klima, there's the 10. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you that, like going to Germany. That's all, oh, I love Germany. I, I love the food over there, I love the people. One of the centers we bowl at, Dream Palace Bowl for the World Bowling Tour event that's held over there. And um, I do like the adult beverages, I cannot lie. Great place to visit. Close match, anyone's match. To begin play here tonight in Vegas. Both girls so strong out of the gate. Brigitte only down by 14. Great ball reaction. Last 10 feet or so. Gives her 60 feet to success. It's a big strike. Yeah, makes the adjustment on that left lane. So you can see the foul line, she's sliding a bit deeper, deeper at the arrows, gets it down the lane to the right faster. Again, there's that friction spot in the back, just wants the ball to change direction so strongly. Great adjustment. Whatever she did, probably a three and two move, four and two move, to give her more length, more skid, and then the roll in the back portion of the pocket. Rain working on a spare and some late help for the four seed, Lee Jane. Eight frame strike, keeps things very interesting. Right around 10, 11 at the arrows, she's playing more directly up the lane. Again, watch the ball as it's going off the pin deck. If it's going towards the left, towards the A pin, great shape down the lane. It's retaining a lot of energy. Bounces off the sidewall if you got the nine. I'm assuming she had that reaction all week long here at the Orleans. 14 pins up, going into the ninth frame. Foundation frame, this for a 24 pin lead. Max score 256, comes in high, oh no. Almost the big four. Four, six, 10 split. Yeah, almost. Now, Brigitte's strength right now, she wanted to be inside of the other ladies, and that's what she's doing. Lee Jane, very high in the head pin, just splits directly. You can see the two and three pins split down the middle, leaves the four, six, 10. This is a makeable spare. The idea for this bear really is to try to hit the six and the ten very hard to bounce off the back into the four. Takes care of two, action. but yeah. Crowd hoping for the four pin as well. Let's take a look. Got a really good effort, but it is an open frame. Yeah, she can either try to bounce it hard off the back or try to slide it over. Great reaction. She tried sliding behind it, and that's exactly what it did, just behind. That left lane's getting trickier. And again, Lee Jane is to the outside of Brigitte. It's an advantage for her right now. There's more friction to the outside portion of the lane for her. She's taking advantage of that and trying to play to her strength, which is left to right. So on the bench, Birgit Poplar in great shape. Chance for a lead here, foundation frame. Looks for the double. Has it! That's a conversion you need to win. And she's up by eight pins. And you know, as the number one seed, Going into the matches, she did that all week long. She performed so well. Now, she drops the ball very strong into the lane, so the ball is really going into the lane. Again, very aggressive. She's pushing off her right leg, which is injured right now, but she's still maintaining her aggression, and she knows she has to be left or inside of all the other girls right now. Danielle McEwen, lone American in the field of five bowlers here tonight in Vegas, waits the winner as the third seed. Tenth frame, step it up, converting. Yeah, she here get Max. popular. Max score of 242. Lee Jane can only strike out to shoot 224, so she's going to move on and face Team USA athlete Danielle McEwen. As long as Birgit keeps on the lane here, she will advance. That's the five seed to defeat Lee Jane from Malaysia. She does it. Late trip on number nine, and she's a winner. Yeah, she's got that left lane figured out. She made the correct move, stayed with the same ball. Looks like she's getting a little more aggressive, but she moved inside deeper to play that hook spot in the back portion of the lane. 
Four bagger in the match here and seven total strikes for Birgit. Danielle McEwen, Stony Point, New York, not too far from New York City, is next. And she'll have to face one hot bowler right now because Birgit Pavla is dialed in. Yeah, she's sending a message home. Those last three shots were crisp and pristine. She's looking forward to climbing the ladder. Good shot late here for Lee Jane, one of eight Malaysian players in the field this week. Yeah, no, in fact, Lee Jane, the Malaysians came over to bowl some of the ladies' tour stop. So they're going to come back later in the season, start off in the Midwest with the upcoming future events. And I'm sure we're going to see them in the top 12 and even some on t future telecasts. They have a great program back in Malaysia called the Podium Program. They're fully paid and funded by their federation, and the program allows for more funds to travel and compete in events like this. Well, she got through a very tough field to make the final five and the TV show here tonight. 256 in all, 21 different countries represented. That's so unique and really, as we talked about Kelly at the top of the broadcast, shows where women's bowling is, have five different countries represented on the TV show. Yeah, the strength in numbers within world competition with the worlds taking place this past year in Dubai, upcoming European events, Asian events, and of course here in the USA. Again, the caliber of athletes and talent that's coming worldwide is, is amazing. 2.42, 2.24. The first match in the books. Danielle McEwen from Stony Point, New York, will take on Birgit Puppler from Germany in match number two. They all are vying for the USBC Queens major championship tonight from Las Vegas. Step ladder bracket. One match is complete. 242-224 win for Birgit Puppler of Germany. Now Danielle McEwen is next. Lone American in the field. 24 years old. She's joined now by Carolyn. Danielle, ever since you won the tour championship last year, you have been on an unbeatable winning streak. What is one of the keys to your success? Um, I think just having the PWBA tour back has made me really sharp and especially in my mental game I'm just learning so much and growing so just taking it week to week. Okay well I hope that continues for you. Good luck Thank tonight. You. Back to you Dave. Carol and Danielle thanks. Birgit Puppler Kelly apparently just fine the leg injury she talked to us about pre-match seemed to be a big concern for her. She tried a lot of different treatment options but didn't feel 100 percent. Yeah your basic stuff you know Heat treatment, so bound, I used to take the inflammation starts, out of it, ibuprofen, everything she did. She's been struggling with it since the second block, and she's just trying to play again more left to right to avoid it. From hoops to hockey, the diamond of the gridiron. The morning's most outrageous team has you covered. Don't miss Boomer and Carton weekday morning starting at 6 Eastern, right here on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports, CBS Sports Network. Bridger right now, she's staying loose on the unused lane. She's allowed to do that, the competitors, not to compete on the pair that we're bowling competition on. But she's able to stay loose, and again, she's favoring that right leg. So she, her goal here is to stay inside of Danielle, have a little more miss to the right of her where the friction is, and hopefully she can get away with it for the next few matches. How did Danielle McEwen get to the finals? Let's find out. Break down her road, Kelly. Well, she defeated Corey Lieber, lost to Diane Zavalova, 736. Diana posted some great numbers. But she went into the contenders bracket, and look at the field of players she defeated. Verity Crawley, Victoria Johansson, another international player. Again, Katie Sutphin and Rocio Restrepo from Colombia. But her, her scores, her average is 698, 663, 746, 714. She only got stronger as the competition went on, and that's the reason why she's here tonight. 
Now she told us yesterday winning the 2015 Smithfield PWBA Tour Championship in Arlington, total career changer for her. Gave her such confidence for the second year, the return of the PWBA. Yeah, as a Team USA member and one of her fellow teammates, I've watched her grow, and she's so level-headed. She's so mature. She has so much to be going for her right now. So it'll be interesting seeing how this match goes. Both are strong competitors. Um, Danielle is just, again, building up her resume and coming off a high. She's She hasn't gotten bad. She keeps getting stronger and stronger as the weeks go on. Final moments of practice here for each as they get set for this big matchup in our Stepladder finals, match number two. Can we say it's uh, pizza versus schnitzel? The American food, hamburgers against schnitzel? You can say that. I can say that. Okay, good. <laughs> you just did. <laughs> We're ready to go. Then we asked all five bowlers beforehand about what this means because they come from different countries. And Danielle said, absolutely, this is something I want to do for my country. So patriotism in addition to the motivation of winning the Tiara, $20,000 first place prize check, and a major. Place in history, it's a big deal all the way around. Yeah, and recognized because, again, she's wearing a Team USA jersey. She's so proud to be representing her country, one of 10 ladies in a world of over 400 million to represent our country in competition. Brigitte for Germany. All the girls on the telecast tonight are all on their national team. So they're just one of men of a few within the world. Here we go, match two, underway. And a shot, and 3-6 remaining for Danielle McEwen. Yeah, I think the left lane is gonna be troublesome for all the ladies tonight. It seems to be breaking down much more rapidly than the right lane. We'll definitely see adjustments between balls, angles, approaches to compensate for that different and transitioning lane. Big step up for Danielle. She did not make match play a year ago at the Queens in Green Bay. Converts the 3-6 and a good start with a mark. She packed all three in the 10th in the last match. So starting here on the right lane, her good lane. Let's see how she kicks off match number two against Danielle. Wow. Late trip, not one but two pins. Avoids a split and has a strike. Sometimes you get lucky. Yeah. She's feeling comfortable. This one just inside target line a little bit, still at the break point around the right area. Four pin comes forward. But watch here at the pins. As the ball is going through, it's gonna be a little bit high on the head pin. Comes up high, leaves the, almost the four nine, but then she's able to trip it out. Now again, left lane is hooking. Finished with three strikes on this left lane. First attempt, match number two. Dialed in as the lanes transition. And we spoke to Bigger about that pre-match, having to come from the bottom of the stepladder. It's a lot of bowling, fighting that injury, and got to make a lot of strategic adjustments as the lanes change. She was so happy to qualify. It didn't matter that she led all week long and dominated through the matches. When it came down, she lost to Sandra. She was just she was happy to be on the show. Already a ball change for Danielle. Coming to the on the right lane. That didn't take long, did it? And there's a strike. No. She might be using two different balls in the lane. We'll see when she goes back to the left. Danielle's approach, just so smooth and unique. Carries the ball slight in the first step. Her key is her push away, but gets it past the knee. Long legged, great power step. Look at the leverage in her shoulder. Top of the swing, great flat spot. Her hand is so clean at the bottom of the swing with her release. She never squeezes the ball. It's always on line, and the ball follows her swing identically. Two different balls, each lane.
much deeper on the left lane with a little bit of a weaker ball. So obviously both girls playing each lane slightly differently. Third frame now for Birgit Poplar. Trying to stay perfect. Four strikes between the bowlers so far. She talked about with us last year, top 25 finished. That was really good. She was pleased with it. Pulled well a year ago in Wisconsin. She's pulled well the last year and a half. Maybe as a result of the Queens competing. With shots like that. Her friend Toby's in the audience, as we just viewed in on. Tobias is not a bowler. Wanted to make note of that. Big supporter of her, as well as the Brunswick staff here this week, Chuck Gardner and the fellow other tour reps this week were very, very helpful to her with equipment, knowledge of the lanes and how they played. So she had a lot of male influence all week long. Five-time German national champion. Stays perfect, a great start. Front four to begin the match for Birgit Pumpler. Carolyn's got more on Danielle. Well, Danielle saw the same thing that happened to Birgit the first game. That left lane has a little bit more early hook, so what she's opted to do is go with the weaker ball with a little bit of surface so she could play the lanes the way she wanted to, stay in the zone where she felt the most comfortable. On the right lane, still a little bit tight in the middle part of the lane, so she went with a stronger ball with light surface to give a smoother reaction to the pocket. And that, Carolyn, was a flush strike in the 1-3 pocket, her best shot. Yeah, it doesn't get much better than that. When you're watching ball motion down the lane, sliding 20 right around 13 of the arrows, that brown indicator is at 40 feet back there. She hits it repeatedly, and you talk about shape, it's just that smooth curve as it's going down the lane. So much Team USA experience. She's got an app on her iPhone she showed us yesterday, the <laughs> country tracker. So she's been to 17 different countries. And what, she's 24? That's, that's unbelievable. How about that? Comes a little bit high, late Ooh. trip on the four. She'll take it, another strike. And these two are just tearing up the TV pair right now. Yeah, she's much deeper, 14, 15. Just inside the indicator on board 12. Comes up high on the head pin itself. Two pin comes back to go behind the four pin and trip it forward. Ooh, you could see by the reaction on her face too. She knew it was going to be their nine count, but she catches the break and trips the four. I know mom Susan back home loves that reaction to keep her daughter into this match with only in five frames. Poplar looks to stay perfect. Front five. You bet. Rise through the pocket. Shrapnel everywhere on the deck. And a perfect shot. Yeah, now the ladies had 20 minutes to practice prior to the start of competition in the telecast airing tonight. So a lot of the girls are more straighter players. They tend to break the lane down from the right side, create more friction. So when Brigitte gets inside of it, she's able to create more angle to that hook spot and see the shape that she wants to see. Now again, this left lane hook, she's using the same bowling ball in each lane, but definitely playing deeper on the left lane. How about half a dozen? Front six. Yes, sir. Flush, flush, flush. And I'm not talking about all hearts. That was beautiful. That says ausgezeichnet. That means excellent. Excellent. Auf Deutsch. You sure you didn't sneeze? <laughs> the format this week of the 256 entries, we had three rounds of five games of qualifying, 15 games total. Cut to the top 63 plus Liz Johnson, defending champion. She qualified in the top 10. Double elimination format, you lose twice, you're out, and the top five advance to the step ladder. Seats three, four, and five advance. Right now, Daniel's number three seed going up against Brigitte. How about some late help? Oh, oh the scout across the deck takes out number 10. Where is the stamp on that one for the mess? Wow. Five bagger for Danielle McEwen. Wow, I mean, great pocket shot. Ball deflects slightly. See the pins kind of go out to the side rather than back. I think that was the two or the four pin that bounced off the side. Must have been the head pin. Came back over late messenger, put a stamp on it because she delivered, knocked out the 10. Wow, strike fest here. Halfway home for Poplar for a perfect game. 290 pace for Danielle. Goodness. Can't have it better for live TV. 
Seven frame. Keeps it going. She's not going away, neither is Brigitte. Now, interesting fact, when a player has a front five or six, we'll, we'll continue on, let that streak go. Don't want to go to commercial break right now and, and try to get her out of tempo. So, Brigitte has the front six. Let's see if she can maintain that, that focus and keep the string alive. 300 games are very hard to do. It's like a perfect game in baseball. It is tough. Looks for the front seven to stay perfect. Hurry up. Yes, indeed. Seven straight. Wow, scores were high all week long. They really, really were. This is great right here. 12-13 at the arrows. Gets it right to that friction spot, which I said she wanted to. Again, the ball flush. I mean, 10 straight back. Look at the head pin. Falls down straight back. It doesn't get much better than that. Did you expect this high scoring pace? I did. I did. It happened all week long. Uh, I mean, if you look at the overall average of the field, the top 62 that made it, it, it was impressive. The competitive nature of the girls, the strength of the field, just allowed for multiple angles to be played. Another? And high scores. Streak ends with a 10 pin. After the front seven for Birgit Puppler of Germany. Yeah, she's still ahead, but Danielle could take advantage of this now with the spare in the next six in a row. She's on 290 pace. Poplar with 279 if she converts the spare. The door is slightly open. There's a 10 pin, single pin conversion for Birgit Poplar. After the front seven, a spare. Great conclusion to this fantastic match from Vegas is coming up on CBS Sports Network. Eight frames coming up for Danielle, looking for the seven bagger. A moment ago, she spoke with Marshall Kent, her boyfriend, a star on the PBA tour. Yeah, Marshall was just reassuring her that she's doing the right thing. Yeah, you know, Marshall is just reassuring her that she's doing the right thing. Just uh, trying to be smooth, which she already is. And her hand was doing the right thing. So as long as she keeps doing what she's doing, they're polar opposite. She's a perfectionist. She likes to really strategize everything. He's more laid back and just knows how good she really is. Seven bagger. Seven pin. Wobbles and will not fall. Breaks the streak. Such a good shot out of the break, too. Down here, 12 inside again. Hits board 10, 9, 10 in the back. Ball deflects slightly. Four pin just falls in front of the seven pin. Right there, domino effect. One into the two. Four goes slightly in front of the seven. Touches it, but just not enough to knock it down. There's seven single pin conversion. And a great career at Fairleigh Dickinson in New Jersey, two-time NCAA Player of the Year. First team collegiate All-American, academic All-American, three times. Loves bowling around the world. Absolutely loves the traveling. She said all the countries she's attended right now and been to. Love Dubai out of the most. Her and Marshall spent some good time over there together. And she enjoyed the weather, the shopping, and everything else that goes with Dubai. Foundation frame. Split. This is tough. It's the 4 6. Yeah, that left lane is getting so jumpy in the back portion. She's so much deeper. Doesn't get it quite far enough right because the last time she was over there, she got a little too far right. Came back. But now she leaves the 4 6. So the late open. Gives Poplar a chance to. Press down the gas pedal and just drive right by. Bernice Lim is next. Two seed will take on the winner of this match. And on the bench, Poplar watching the open frame, and the foundation frame especially, so damaging. Birgit tries to take advantage. He's got to really hurry up and look out. Still the match. Wood and the 10-pin stand. 
to a 10. Yeah, I'm not quite sure because of her injury in her leg, she pops up at the foul line, Paul goes way far right down here, not necessarily in the gutter, but far enough off its intended path. Doesn't have enough to get back to the pocket, the 2 8 10. Now, you want to play smart, you really just try to go for the wood, knocked over two more pins to increase your score and take it to the 10th frame. That's exactly what she's going to do. Take the 2-8, 10 stands, late open frame. And how about this development? Each in the foundation frame with an open to make this a really exciting finish. Big step there in the third, makes her force up even longer, but she's so late with it, falls off balance here. Again, it could be that push off trail leg, but when she's trying to accelerate and create so much power, she over torqued her torso, made her fall off balance and project the ball way, way far right down the lane. So that's what she needs. She's been key on this left lane. Can she get the first? No, she cannot. That comes in way high. Wow. Three, six, seven, ten. And each bowler so late struggling with a lane transition. This left lane is so jumpy, so high on the head pin. Just goes straight through the pins, cutting it like a chainsaw. Make will spare. She's got to take the three pin and slide it over, take out the seven. Can she create enough angle? Possibility. No, she oh. can't. Just an eight pin count. And now the bench, Danielle McEwen sees the match change dramatically in her favor. Yeah, she thought she was done. She now has a chance to come up and win the match in advance. Well, this is it, Kelly. It's all about the 10th frame. You've done this how many times in your great career with six major championships? Yeah, there's been a few. What is going through her mind right now? Well, if she if she takes the advice from Marshall and Jim Callahan, Del Ballard, she's just going to stay smooth. Jim told her, hit her target, play catch with your target. The pins will fall down. Just a mark and eight, all she needs. How about the mark? Yes, indeed. 60 feet to success, a huge strike for Danielle McEwen. And she is in the driver's seat to advance. Yeah, all she had to do was hit her target. I mean, if you watch the match every time, she's hitting 10, 10, right at the back. Six pin trips out the 10, ball's deflecting slightly, but when you're striking, you don't move. You read your ball, let the ball be the guide. Stay where she's at, she's got to hit her target again, eight pins to advance. Eight for the win. How about 10 down and a victory for Danielle McEwen. The three seed from Stony Point, New York will climb the ladder. Trying for the Queens Championship. I've seen her bowl so many times. She's been so clutch in the 10th frame. Every single time she's needed it. Really such a great athlete, a great athlete. Danielle McEwen climbs the ladder. Hoping for a second career major. The lone American in the field is through. When we come back, Carolyn will tell us how important it is to get a count on a split. Some great bowling tips on the way from the USBC Hall of Famer, Carolyn Dorn Ballard. Las Vegas, home to some incredible entertainment. We had a really entertaining match a moment ago, wrap up between McEwen and Pupler. Great start for Brigitte. She had the front seven looking for a moment for a 300 game, but then she struggled at the end with a couple of open frames and splits were a big issue for her. So do you want to be a champion? Sometimes getting count on a split is more important than you might think, as Carolyn tells us in this week's USBC Bowling Academy.
split, split, split. That's all I see. Obviously, it happens to all of us, whether you're in league competition or tournament competition. The key about splits is every now and then we really, really think we can make them. But let's be honest. Every now and then, the smart move is to make count. A really good example is when we leave the Greek church. If you're on a double, you want to get count. You don't want to lose pins. You have to get the three, especially if you're in team format. The big finish there is getting the most count for your team so you can win your match, just the game, or league. It's about getting the count. Now, I know, I know we think we can slide those pins over, but there are some, like the 710, that's actually impossible to make unless you can throw it really hard, get that pin to bounce out of the back, and come back and hit the other pin. So really, be smart about when you're making splits, especially in a team environment. It's about the count. It's about what did you do before that split. Like I said, if you're on a double, if you're on a strike, those pins count double. Kristen is gonna use her spare ball to shoot at the 210. Most bowlers think they can push the two pin into the 10, but really it's less than 10% that this spare can be made. Don't forget, going for the wood is your best option. The 4-9, the spare that all bowlers think they can make. They want to send that 4-pin over into the 9. But once again, depending on what your score is, are you willing to risk giving up pins to add to a possible victory? Remember, it's just one frame. OK, we all made bad shots. But you need to get back up there, get the count, go in the back, regroup and make sure that the next time you get up to make your shot, you are focused on making the best shot you can. Remember, the key to splits, getting the count. CDB, thanks, great advice. USBC Bowling Academy provides hundreds of hours of high quality instructional videos for bowlers of all skill levels. Learn from Team USA and USBC certified goal coaches, as well as other top pros and instructors. Visit usbcbowlingacademy.com today for more information. Pretty Slim, the two seed from Singapore, just 24 years old, will take on American Danielle McEwen the next match, trying to climb the ladder at the USBC Queens. After a wild topsy-turvy finish to the last match, Danielle McEwen the United States. Over Birgit Poplar from Germany, 245-233. Now Bernice Lim, the two seed from Singapore, is next for Danielle. Match number three, Sandra Anderson, our top seed from Sweden, awaits the winner. Yeah, Bernice is starting off the match, so she will be the last to finish. Cross is over. Little break, good start. Yeah, could be TV nerves, you just never know. Obviously inside of whatever her target was, but catches the, the non-pocket side for the strike. Let's say that. Well said. <laughs> strike fest early in that match over Poplar. And then the scramble through the open frames. That's quite a finish and a good start to this match for Danielle McEwen. Perfect into the one three pocket. In all my years of Team USA competition, Danielle, 24 years old, young, vibrant. She's one of the best at repeating shots. It's, it's remarkable to watch. I'm glad she's on my team. <laughs> Pleasure to talk about her right now here at the 2016 USBC Queens. Looking good in the left lane, and that means a lot coming from you. You know, it, it's wonderful to recognize such young talent. And um, like I said, seeing our, our junior gold program, where she came from, William Patterson, the school she went to. She, um, Fairleigh Dickinson, excuse me, she's just a product of her environment. She's a hard worker. Can't say enough good things about her. 
Same as Bernice, coming from the Singapore program. Great credentials underneath her belt. Misses the pocket this time, though. Yeah, second shot in the right lane. Looks like it came up a little bit light. Maybe not dialed in. The girls coming on the practice pair, or the TV pair, I should say, get four balls on each lane. Should be enough to get lined up to the pocket. But she leaves the 2-5. She's going to go to hard plastic ball, go fairly straight to attack it, and make the spare. Uh-oh. Boy, the chop does take care of the 2-5 for the mark. That's why it's a plastic ball. It goes fairly long and straight. From behind here, so you're looking at the timing, the swing. Ball drops directly underneath the shoulder. Great swing playing from the top of the shoulder down through the slot. She's so good from the bottom top of her shoulder through the swing. Just gets a little bit right on the right lane, maybe not lined up with the correct angle. But wow, physically sound. Timing plus swing equals release. Finds the pocket this time. Late hit on the seven pin. Third time in the Queens for Bernice Lim. 33rd in 2013, also competed in 2009. Former star at FDU, Danielle McEwen steps back up. Great start. Has the first three in her second match. Greg Gottlieb has an opinion on everything happening from around the sports world. Not afraid to let you know how he feels at a Gottlieb show. Weekdays at 3 Eastern only on CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. This looks familiar. A hot start with lots of strikes. <laughs> Yeah, they closed out the match solid with the, the three shots in the 10th frame. Still sticking with the two different bowling balls in each lane. Left lane is definitely hooking more. The back portion of it. Uh-oh. Yeah, she knew that one off her hand. Right through the nose and high. Might have just been a, little, been a pinch quick. Her physical strength was to push the ball early and stay smooth. So she pushes the ball down, comes through the shot. Watch as she shoulders over rotate a little bit at the top when she releases it and the ball is just immediately inside. Her natural tendency is to miss left because of a choppy push. And chops the three, leaves the 6-10. An open frame after the great start. Takes away the three by itself. Now Bernice is using the same ball on both lanes. Right lane is tighter and comparable to the left lane. See if she makes a, a slight adjustment here in comparison to the last shot she threw over here on the right lane. All of the Singapore girls that compete this week made it to the round of 64. How about that? That's wonderful. Again, just under 50% of the field in the top 64 were all international players. Almost 7-10, just a 7. That's a lot better for Bernice Slim. Yeah, Bernice is a little bit softer speed than Danielle. When the ball comes down the lane, it's losing a little bit of energy. Notice it deflects towards the three in the six pin. Doesn't have enough energy to continue. Seven and ten pin are last to stand. Ten pin gets tripped out by the six in the gutter. It's definitely because the ball has lost too much energy going down the lane. Doesn't have enough force behind it. And uh, sadly, I've left a few myself, but the result is she trips out the ten, leaves the seven. Seven pin takes care of it, trying to become the sixth international player to win the Queens as we see her road to this championship. Jen Higgins, Sahar, Brenda Padilla, 748 to 632. Diana Zavalovo, you'll see her name alike, former Queens champion. Jameson Lee, and then she loses to Sandra Anderson to be in the position she is right now, 712 to 646. Diana won in 2013 in North Ogden, Utah. Fifth frame works on a spare. Finds the range. All 10 down. With a good hit in the 1-3 pocket. 
Well, yeah, Jose Rodriguez in 2014. Unfortunately, Kelly. Yeah, I remember you off for the seconds. final. <laughs> <laughs> but it was still a great run for you that year. Runner up. So many international players that we talked about throughout our broadcast have had success in this event. Carol Giannotti came back after knee surgery. She looks pretty strong, past Queens champion. That's high. For a moment, looked like the big four and just a four seven. Okay, I don't want to jinx her. I just said she's great at repeating. And she is. She's slightly inside a target. Again, look down the lane. Those brown indicators are 34 to 37 feet, 40 to 43. She's just slightly inside of it. There at the break point down here where she's passed other times, she's on the outside of it around board eight or nine. The ball trips up a little bit high, four seven. There's the mark for Danielle. Rubik's Cube, Bernice. Okay, now this was a question I asked for her. Some of the girls use this as a distraction. It just takes their mind away from what they're doing on the lanes. Kind of a little bit of distraction, kind of keep their focus into play. Gets her excited. And she completes it every single time. It's oh amazing. My I, I, it's, I've had it would one, take me hours. I've had one since the age of four. I still have yet to complete it. <laughs> that has transcended time. That's so cool. Yeah. Almost double wood there. Avoids that two pin. All right, here she goes. Still working on that Rubik's Cube. And I think the world record is like under 10 seconds. Have I you think. ever done anything like that? I, no, I, I've seen all the Singapore girls travel internationally with a Rubik's Cube. Some of them have Google because there is there is a, a cheater method to do uh -huh. it. But um, I saw them with their phones yesterday working on the cubes. Yeah, I uh, I think it's amazing. I think you know what a distraction. It's great focus mentality. Shows you how everybody has different methods. There's the mark. We'll find out if Bernice finishes the Rubik's Cube. She put it down for now. <laughs> the distraction she wanted. Halfway home. Great match for the Queens in Las Vegas. What do you think the biggest challenge is still for women in the sports industry? I know how close you are with Brady, but do you believe that he did what he was accused of doing? You do something like that, you're going to get caught. You guys have a, a great perspective on sports. What is the Villanova type? You guys are on <laughs> everything here. We need to talk Tuesday at 7 on CBS Sports Network. Since the beginning, your delegates and regulars have never gotten along. But now, with the new LG Twin Wash, they can live peacefully separate, but washed at the same time. Save up to $250 on an LG Twin Wash bundle. Exciting match number three for the Queens here in Vegas. Bernice Lim of Singapore will step up in the sixth with a chance to take the lead. Let's go to Carolyn, joined by Birgit Pupler. Birgit, you bowled phenomenal from start to finish in this tournament, and that includes on TV. Although you did run into some trouble in the ninth and tenth frame, can you tell us what happened? Um, I have a really bad tension in my leg, and I guess that break just was a little bit too long for me. Maybe I should have warmed up more, but everything I tried during the last couple of days didn't really work to make it any better. So it shouldn't be an excuse, but I just couldn't make the good shots that I needed. Okay, well, it's still a great week. Look forward to seeing you at the next tournament. Back to you, Dave. CDB, thanks so much. Very good. Performing so well, admirably, with the injured right leg we told you about. And late in the match, a little too much for her. Yeah, and she did it early during the competition, too, only in, in block number two. So she had a long way to go to endure that pain and to continue with that injury. But Bernice stepping up here in the sixth frame comes back from the break. Right lane hasn't been her choice, so see if she can nail it down. For the lead. Yes. Five goes down last. It's a strike and an eight-pin advantage for Bernice Lim. Yeah, 
at the break, Jim Callahan, Storm Tour rep, told her to get around the ball a little bit more. She looks like she's got a little bit more access rotation. Same part of the lane, break point area, same as Danielle's. You notice the ball drove through the pins that time and didn't deflect. Way to come back. Four of six strikes on the left lane. Four of six. Two for two for spares. Danielle with one open. So Singapore girls, just so you know, they train five days a week. Five days a week on the lanes, Monday through Friday, three to four hours a day. And they also do physical and strength training three times a week. Very regiment program. Ball 10 down again, plus the Rubik's Cube is part of the train, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. The Junior Gold Championships will take place July 16th through the 23rd in Indianapolis, Indiana. This elite event features the top youth bowlers in the country competing for a quarter of a million dollars in scholarships in six age-based divisions and a chance to bowl on Junior Team USA. Visit bowl.com backslash junior gold for more information. Seven frame works on a spare. Finds the pocket. The 10 goes down last to keep things very interesting here in the last half of the match. Yeah, she basically just kept making ball changes to stay in the same part of the lane. She hasn't moved too much on that right lane. Again, the left one is, is the lane that's giving most of the girls trouble throughout this step ladder performance. You know, she wasn't sure what she was gonna do out of college. She wanted to bowl. She traveled around the world. Now the ladies tour came back and how wonderful it is for the youthful ladies on the show. Average age is what, 24, 25? Um, for them to have this tour to compete. And it's only the beginning. Big strike, back-to-back jacks, seventh and eighth frames. McEwen stays neck and neck with Bernice Lim. Turkey opportunity here in the eighth frame for Bernice. Expand the lead to 18 pins. Now she's been s somewhat decent. She found the right lane. She has to finish on this lane. She's gonna finish up the 10th frame on this lane. So she's been spare, spare strike. Let's see if she can back it up, get a pair of triple strikes. Three in a row for the turkey. Eighth frame. It's got to get there. It does. 18 pin lead. First event. The WBA Tour is also the first major kicking off year two after the return of the tour in 2015. Green Bay. Suburban Chicago and suburban Richmond, Virginia also sites for majors this year. We'll have them for you on CBS Sports Network in June, August, and September. Can't wait to bring you those great events. Yeah, last year we just had a few shows this year, every event televised. You're going to see women's bowling a lot this year on TV. CBS Sports Network, tune in. You'll see girls like Bernice, Danielle, and many others. And we'll see you too. Indeed. Little inside. Little bit high. Foundation frame and the 6'10 standing for Bernice. Yeah, she's uh, she tried to get her hand around the ball in the right lane because the right lane's definitely tighter, but on the left lane here, she tried to wrap it around a little bit more way, way inside. 17 the arrows. Look down here. I mean, she's really far inside at that at that indicator mark there. Ball doesn't have a chance to get to the right. The head pin goes high. She's uh, fortunate. She just leaves the 6'10. Going to the hard plastic ball to make the spare. Covers 6-10, four bagger streak ends. And things are still neck and neck. Sandra Anderson, top seed from Sweden. Has been waiting, watching. And she told Carol, listen to some music on her iPhone. Some FaceTime back to family and friends in Sweden. Some great information. 3.20 a.m. there. <laughs> on Sandra coming up too. All 10 down, great shot from McEwen. Told you she's great at repeating shots and, and her strike song is Cruise, Florida Georgia Line. She's cruising right now. Watch here, again, she's so good at repeating. Same area at the arrow zone, hits at 40 feet right over it. Ball rolls heavy through the pins, almost splits the eight nine directly. She's definitely cued in on that right lane. 
Back to Rubik's Cube. She solved it. She's got done. it. One telecast, she solved it. Um, since the age of four, I still haven't done it. I haven't done it either. Down by six going in the 10th frame. Needs two strikes and seven pins to shut up her niece. Max at 242. Lim Max at 238. Big shot. Hurries and leaves the two pin. Yeah, in previous matches, we've seen that trip forward or roll around. That left lane's getting a little tricky. She has to move deep inside. Now, here's the thing. Talking to lane guru Eric Pearson this week for the Kegel guys, ball deflects, almost leaves the bucket, just leaves the two pin. She thought it was a good shot off her hand, and I concur with her. But as the lanes opened up, you had to get the ball to the right faster to slow down in the middle portion of the lane and create that shape into the pins. Whether you were a straight player or a hook player, that was the key all week long. So on the bench, Bernice Lim watches. McEwen a chance to shut her out. That has not happened. So Bernice is going to step up with a chance to win it. There's nothing like it. Bowling with a chance, stepping up in the 10th frame. Everything on the line. You watch her eyes and her head. Her head never moves. She's so focused. Crossing over Brooklyn strike. Wow. Yeah, side compensation. I'm usually, typically with any athlete, any bowler, men, female, boy, girl, doesn't matter. When you miss right, the tendency is to grab it and miss inward. She's deeper inside there, doesn't get the ball trajected enough to the right, carries a Brooklyn strike. But again, as the lane transition breaks down, the characteristics of this pattern, because of the multiple, ang multiple angles, is you had to open up and get steeper through the front, get it to the right faster, so the terminology of the guys on tours, it bleeds out, it slows down and shapes into the pins. Just 14 pins. That's all Bernice win, needs to win. She'd like to get 10 here, and she does. Singapore will advance to the finals, so it's Europe against Singapore, against Asia. 25 years old. Four pins. I think she can do it one in two shots. Shouldn't be a problem. Keep it on the lane. Stay behind the line. You will advance. <laughs> it's fun to get to meet and speak with Bernice last night. Very charismatic, well-spoken. And boy, does she love bowling. Yeah, the Singapore team, like I said, their training, their mentality, working with the coaches. She flew over here just for this event. Her schedule is so demanding, she has to go home after this. Oh. Nita four gets 10 and gets the win. Bernice Lim has advanced to the championship match to take on Sandra Anderson of Sweden, the top seed. But don't be surprised if we see Danielle with more to come in the next and the upcoming season. She is so talented. Big hello to her family back in Stony Point, New York. Mom, Susan, family back home, the center. Be very proud of your daughter. When we spoke to her last night, she was on her iPhone working on flights to try to get Susan out here. Last second, it's tough. <laughs> it is. They just celebrated their anniversary back home. Right. I think it's 15 years, and um, it's great. Bernice Lim has clinched the match over Danielle McEwen. She did not make match play a year ago, so Danielle, a really good Queens event in 2016. Coming up, Anderson Lim for the championship. USBC Hall of Famer Liz Johnson as the champion of the Queen. She won a year ago in Green Bay over Aaron McCarthy. Well, this year, international champ, Anderson Lim. Title match. Sandra has been waiting, listening to tunes, chatting with a lot of fans who are here from Sweden to root her on. Bernice starting off the match again. She's going to finish on that right lane. I think she likes the right lane. Underway, championship match. Great start. Maybe your best shot.
Crunches right into the 1-3 pocket. And here is Sandra Anderson's first shot. Just 24 years old. Very interesting road to get back to the top of the bowling world. Deliberate, focused, almost a big four. Much further right than Bernice is. If she wanted to stay in the zone, she was comfortable in playing in an entirely different area than, than Bernice is. Let's see what we can see here. Wow, she's around six, seven, eight. Ball never slows down, continuation. High on the head pin, big four. Two pin trips out the seven. So she out of the gate, four, six, 10. Tough split. Not the way you want to start. Takes care of the 6-10, leaves the four. Open frame early. You saw Bernice was right back to the Rubik's Cube a moment ago. <laughs> That's her focus point. Yeah, qualified 61st, so all of her players all over the field defeated Shani Ang, 580, 577, by three pins. I watched her strike out to beat her. Katie Garcia, Brummett, Stephanie Johnson, who was a dominant player, she shot 759. Brigitte, obviously, in the finals, and now Bernice Lim, so. She went through a strong field to put herself in this position. Nice bounce back after the open frame. Yeah, it's going to be interesting because Sandra's in an entirely different zone than all the other girls were throughout the stepladder performance right now. Sliding, she's right around 7, 8 at the hours, very much more direct up the lane. Look at her break point. All the other girls have been getting it right over that brown indicator mark, but she's exactly outside of it to the right of it. That's her A game. That's where she wants to be, and she's using a very aggressive bowling ball to do it. These bowling balls are like vacuum cleaners. They just soak up the oils they're traveling down the lane and gives them more and more reaction over time. Right for Lim and a great start for the two seed. Wonder how many bowlers watching tonight are going to go order a Rubik's cube. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, are they online right now, getting one shipped. I hate to say it, but Amazon.com, look out—you uh, might right. have a big order coming a, a through. Big, big order for sure. And again, I said she only came over to bowl this event because her schedule within Singapore is so busy. She's got to go home right after this to get ready for the Singapore Open. All the girls are going back. It's a full day of travel. That's it is. It is. Trip. Yes, they leave on the 27th, they land on the 29th. Oh. Talk about losing time. In a zone. Singapore national champion, Team Singapore, for many years. Let's go back to Carolyn. San Sandra did, as the matches went on during the week, Sandra did move right of everyone as everyone started to move a little left off that spot. She felt more comfortable and felt that right now, stay, keeping the ball in front of her and e increasing her ball speed to stay in that spot was what was helping her win matches. And she's opted for that tonight. Yeah, so commenting what Carolyn said, she's totally in a different zone. She's playing to her game, her strength. Look how far right she is on the lane. Take where she looks at slides at the foul line. Right about 12, 13 at the foul line. Her hand releases. Again, seven at the arrows, five, six down the lane at about 40 feet. Watch the thumb hole, that white thumb hole as it starts to migrate to the ball. Shows the skid hook roll motion. Two times Swedish national champion. And you know what? She did not get picked last year for the team in, in the Worlds. But that was the interesting story I wanted to get to. Yeah, but she's on it this year. Her That's fourth frame. It does, and crunches into that one-three pocket, all ten down, into the pit, and a turkey for Sandra Anderson, who was not invited back to Team Sweet. And she told us pre-match she took about six months off with no competition, worked more on her mental game than physical game to get herself back in the proper mindset to compete at a world-class level, and it worked. Yeah. Yeah, she struggles a little communication uh, back there, and. Um Found some new methods to talk and communicate. Back to land, back to strength. What a start. Front four for Bernice. Mike Kaufman is here. Director of Bowling Operations, Boyd Gaming. Good to see Mike on board.
Mike, a longtime friend of the PWBA Tour. In the past, uh, the ladies, we had a lot of stops in Las Vegas. Yeah, we'd win money and lose money at the same time. <laughs> Hence the Boyd Gaming. Bernie stepping up here in the fifth frame on the left lane. Trying to stay perfect. Front five. Indeed, with a late hit on the seven pin. Down it goes. Five straight. It looks good. Now, Bernice in the previous match against Danielle, she wasn't quite hitting the pocket powerfully. She had the swishy strikes, and she does it again. Ball hits the pins to flex slightly. Two pin or four pin kicks off the side rail. She knows it. Look at that reaction. Trips out the seven pin. Everybody has their pocket shot. Some girls have the flush. Some girls have the trip four forward. The lefties, the six pin. Some can swishy strike it and knock out the seven last minute. Back to Sandra now. Ten pin standing, hoping for the turkey in the fifth frame. Let's look at Sandra's game here. She starts up at the second row dot, so she's far in front. One with the right foot, two, three. Doesn't have a big swing. Slides forward, left arm recoils a lot. She's got a lot of shoulder rotation, but she's able to stay behind the ball, and the knee continues to slide forward, giving her that power. There's the 10, there's the mark. And what's interesting watching Sandra Bowl is if you watch her eyes and her head, when she starts her motion, she's looking forward or down the lane, but then she starts to look even closer at her target. Now the left lane, he's given her a little bit more hold. She missed slightly inward on the last shot, but she, again, playing to her strength, playing up the lane keeping the ball in front of her. Down 32, works in the spare. Sixth frame, finds the range, all 10 down for Sandra Anderson. Front five for Bernice Lim, PWBA will award tonight a $10,000 bonus if Bernice can roll a 300. And the team from Singapore came over early and started to work with tour representative Jimmy Callahan from Storm. And um, back in Singapore, they really focus a lot on the physical fundamentals, repeating shots. But here, their training is more about team play, lane play, and manipulating their hand position. Halfway home. The 10 was last. Six strikes. Other top finishers of the Queens this week here in Vegas. Kelly? Yeah, Stephanie Johnson, just one match side of making the show. New Wave Fen, Brenda Padilla, Lindsay Boomershine showing great respect out here. Osiris Restrepo, I have a feeling you might see her. Shannon Plahowski in there, some up and coming newcomers. Amanda Green, past winner. Aaron McCarthy, a seed here last year, top qualifier. Tish Johnson, Tish the legend. Second place finisher here at the USBC Senior Queens. Aaron, the runner up to Liz Johnson a year ago. Mm. That was a 256 202 score. Yeah, that was a. Uh, yes, it was. Front seven. No. Yes, ten, 10 pin stands. Perfect game is over, but what a start. With half a dozen strikes and a big lead in the championship match. What a way to, to get out of the gate going. Put pressure on your opponent right now. All she's doing is focusing on what she can control, and that's from the back of the approach to the foul line. There's a 10, there's the mark, and Bernice in the driver's seat, hoping for her first Queen's title. Maybe back to Rubik's Cube. Gonna write down some notes instead. Anderson needs a late rally. Hashtag new bowling trend, hashtag Rubik's Cube, right? Exactly. <laughs> Bernice Lim, in the Callahan Tour rep, asked her in the break. How many times did you do it? Bernice said twice. <laughs> twice she's done it already. So he messed it up again for her. Yeah, don't ask him to put together. But go right back to trying to solve it. Yeah, she looks so calm and collected while she's doing it too. But Sandra's going to step up on the right lane now. See if she comes back for the commercial break. Trails by 41 pins, working on a strike. Look at her focus in her eyes. It's got to happen right now. Looks for the double. Has it. Big shot. 
And if White Road converts a 7-10 split on our CBS Sports Network Finals, we'll receive a $100,000 bonus courtesy of Ultimate Bowling Products. Yeah, again, you don't want to leave it, but if you make it, hey, that, that's pretty good. But Sandra right now is going to step on the left lane and in her free time, I shouldn't say free time, but her main occupation, she's a makeup artist. And I have to compliment her on, on her skill right now. Her face is beautiful, beautiful complexion. And uh, that's what she does for a living. So kudos to her boss back home, Eva, for letting her come out this week to Las Vegas and compete in the Queens. Push, push, push. It hurried. Did you see that direction of the arm? That means stay out, stay out, stay out. Can't always talk to your bowling ball, but you do try to encourage it. Off her hand, slightly inside of target. You could see her waving that right hand. But now again, where there's hook for the girls playing inside, there's hold for the girls or Sandra playing to the right. Help it, help it, help it. <gasps> and it stays right. Crushes the pocket. So Turkey in the eighth frame for her. Nabunis up 21. Responds again. Eighth frame. Working on a spare. Watch live early round coverage of all PWBA events, plus live and on-demand coverage of all the best professional bowling action on Extra Frame. Visit www.extraframe.tv for more info or to subscribe today. Looking good there, Kelly. That backswing. Yep, not too bad. 189 the seventh, so she's 21 pins ahead of Sandra stepping up in the ninth frame. She finished on the right lane last match. Uh, by her score, you know she's queued in here, so let's see if she can impact her score even more. Max score of 279. Avoid uh, disaster and just a two pin. A pinch light, yeah. You know, the oil in the lane, it's a blind obstacle. You can't see it, you have to adjust to it based on your bone ball's reaction. Sliding much deeper. She's right around 15 at the arrows. Watch the white and the maroon on the ball. The white's starting to migrate and get higher, forcing itself to try to change direction. Just doesn't come into the roll phase enough. But if you don't get 10, the object is to leave only one to make. Nine spare is good. Going through these matches, I believe the telecast average has been 233. And it took an average of 212 to make the top 64 this week. Impressive scores. There are the max scores. Look at that. We could have ourselves a great finish. 259, 258. Unbelievable. Foundation frame trying for the four bagger. This is a big shot. To cut it to 11. Uh oh. Oh, it's way off the mark on the white hit. And only the six pin count. Disaster. Yeah, even the crowd knew that one. Not quite sure. Let's take a look at this frame. Sliding board 12. Wow, look at the rotation in her torso. Really over exaggerated. The ball is so far down the lane, almost near the gutter, way outside of the normal break point zone. She's lucky that she left the four count spare to convert. One, two, four, eight does cover. And that helps her cause, but a strike there was crucial. So on the bench, Lim, back to the Rooks queue. 234, max score now for Sandra. That was a big frame. <laughs> hey, do you think she has a cheater method? Did, now, wait she, a did she take off one of the did stickers? She, was she removing some tiles there? No, oh, I believe it broke. Okay. Because I was really impressed. <laughs> I still have. Twice, remember, twice in yeah. the two-hour show. <laughs> it was in two matches for her. Needs this hit right here. Came in high, didn't like it, right up on the release. Yeah, again, slight over compensation. Missed so far right on the right lane. Grabs it slightly inside, tendency to miss inward. Doesn't have the hold in front of her like she did the last frame. 223, Bernice just needs some, some pins on the first ball and she is gonna be your 2016 USBC Queens champion. Taking the title to Singapore. Only three pins, all she'll need. Top seed, Sandra Anderson bowling so well, coming all the way back, not making Team Sweden, basically quitting competitive bowling for six months. Works so much as she talked about to us pre-match on her 
mental game. She said, well, I didn't feel like bowling. I just didn't do it. I wanted to get the passion and the love back for the sport, and she got that. It got all the way to the championship match. She does now, because from this event, she's going home for less than a week's time to bowl the European Championship in Vienna. Smithfield moment of the match. Let's check it out, Kelly. Yeah, the Smithfield moment comes in the ninth frame right here. Sandra, watch again, the shoulders really over-rotate, forces the ball to go very left to right, outside of her target zone. She tried to accelerate through the shot, but unfortunately, that was the key factor of the match. Bernice walking away. With a championship, needed three, gets nine, and that's it. And she's smiling. Yay, she's finally smiling. Bernice Lim is the 2016 USPC Queens champion. Her first career win on U.S. soil. And the long trip back to Singapore will be well worth it. She'll go with a tiara and a $20,000 check as well as a champion. Place in women's bowling history. The two C, Bernice Lim, has won in Las Vegas. How many Rubik's Cubes are being purchased online right now? A lot. Because Bernice has won. She's a champion. Standing ovation in Vegas for Bernice Lim. More coming up. The USBC Queens on CBS Sports Network has been brought to you by Smithfield. Flavor hails from Smithfield. Get inspired at smithfield.com today. By Pepsi, the official soft drink of the PWBA Tour. And by Kegel, your lanes, our passion. Bernice Lim, high scoring oil pattern, has got a championship. Kelly, what an effort. Yeah, I mean, Brigitte Popular, number one qualifier. Lee Jane, Danielle advances, beats Brigitte. Let's go to Bernice and look at that smile. Bernice Lim has succeeded Liz Johnson. She'll wear the tiara proudly and bring it back to Singapore. She is a champion. Congratulations to Bernice Lim. 248-223 win over Sandra Anderson, winner of the 2016 USBC Queens. Be sure to join us Saturday, June 4th at noon.